So in 10th place, we have the Phantom Forces fandom. There are actually two general sides of the fandom. There's the really toxic part and the really, really nice part. I would definitely say it's a very good fandom for you to join if you like Roblox first-person shooters. I know you guys are going to be triggered, but I put the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fandom in 9th place. A lot of people say it's the most toxic anime fandom. Boy, it is not. It's a really good fandom if you if you know how the uh, people like it. If you know what people like in the fandom. So in 8th place, we have Team Fortress 2. This is a fandom that I only am in. I do not play the Team Fortress 2 game, but I know a lot about Team Fortress 2. It's a pretty good fandom overall. The only thing that's annoying about it is that the tryhards in the game are almost bound to be toxic. So avoid those people. But the rest of the fandom's really chill. In 7th place, we have Wings of Fire. This fandom is one that I have barely ever been in. I've only been in it for like two days, and already from the start, they're really kind and really welcoming. I have only read two of the books, and everyone's like, whoa. I think it's because the books are so freaking long or something. Yeah, these books are freaking long. But pretty good fandom overall. In sixth place, we have... A fandom that you probably would never expect, because the fandom is so small. It's the Gun Gale Online fandom. I think they're so nice because the fandom is small. Usually the bigger the fandom, the more toxic they're going to be, because the more little kids are on there. But anyways, basically, this fandom has barely any people. It basically is sort of online Super Saiyan in terms of kindness. As we go into the top 5, in 5th place, we have the Memes slash Vine community. Surprisingly, even though the fandom is bigger than the Marvel fandom, it's bigger than the Marvel fandom. It's still extremely nice. It's way nicer than the Marvel fandom. But the Vine fandom is dying at an alarming rate. If not, it is dead already, like, deserted. But... Either way, still a pretty good fandom overall. In fourth place, we have the Vocaloid fandom. This fandom, they don't really talk to you. That's probably why they're not toxic. They mainly just spam, like, Vocaloid music. I only joined this fandom because of one song. Because of one music. Which, I'll leave the link to the video in the description. So, yeah. On to the next one. In third... In, coming into the top three, in third place, we have Indie Games, not including Undertale, because that's because that fandom's really toxic. Basically, any Indie Game fandom except Deltarune and Undertale is a very kind fandom. So, in second place, we have a fandom that I was in when I was five, till when I was around eight. That was the Jurassic Park fandom. This fandom was really nice, as I think it was all adults who understood that kids like to watch these kind of dinosaur stuff. Which now I don't, because I've grown up, I've matured, so I don't watch this stuff anymore. Unless if it's a new movie, then I'm watching it. Because it's new. But anyway, the fandom's really nice. Recommend it if you like dinosaurs. First off, remember, this is my own opinion, but in first place, we have Roblox Arsenal. I think I've been in this fandom the longest. I don't think it even has a fandom, but everyone who likes it seems to be swarming the Discord. So, that can be considered a fandom. So, the Arsenal fandom has two sides. The toxic ace pilots, or the really nice people, like other skins, other than Zero Two. Because, basically, the Zero Two skins were toxic in-game and on the fandom. But the rest of them are normal on the game and normal on the fandom. But back to the fandom itself. It is a very good fandom. Recommend it, again, if you like first-person shooter games on Roblox. Same thing with the Phantom Forces fandom. 